Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, uh, Sam Rochel. Uh, here, uh, I'm t- uh, joined today by a, a very special guest uh, from a, a slightly different part of the world that we'll, we'll hear about, and I'll let he- her talk about it, but uh, joined by Dr. Tanika oconnor Denny. Um, how are you doing, Tanika? I'm doing fine, Sam. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great to talk with you. Uh, I know we've had the opportunity to meet at uh, meetings a couple times, and and we uh, shared the the experience of, of having spent some time at Arkansas. So maybe you can talk a little bit uh, about your background, where you are now, and, and kind of what you're up to, to let the audience know who you are. All right, definitely. Um, So I kind of have a unique background. You know, obviously I'm from Jamaica, as you can hear from my accent. So I did not grow up in a farming background. In fact, I'm a strictly city girl by birth. But I decided that I did not want to study biological sciences. And I went to the College of Agriculture, Science and Education, did agricultural education for my associate's degree. And then I transferred my credits to Louisiana State University. Unbeknownst to me, no matter how high your grades are, LSU does not give scholarships to transfer students. So I had to work three, four jobs, you know, the stereotypical Jamaican working multiple jobs. And one of those jobs was working as a student worker for Dr. Lee Southern. So at the end of my undergrad career, when, you know, I owed LSU money and they wouldn't give me my degree to go back to Jamaica, they said, hey, do your master's, we'll pay you and you'll get your degree afterwards. So, you know, when I was racking my brain, what should I study? I said, I loved working for Dr. Southern. So I signed up to be his graduate student and then, you know, paid off my undergrad degree, got my master's and said, well, you know, since I have the master's, might as well continue on to the, to the PhD. I met with uh, Dr. Emerit at the University of Arkansas, and he indicated that not only did he want a new PhD student, but he also had an opening for a program technician, which paid a little bit more. So I went to University of Arkansas. I was low at first sight. You know, I I kept it in the SEC, you know, between the Tigers and the Razorbacks. And um, while I was there, I, I was one of the few nutritionists at the time that in, because I got rid of all of my nutrition courses requirements at LSU, I focused mainly on physiology when I was at University of Arkansas. And I always knew that I was going to go back to Jamaica. So I made sure that I had a a well-rounded educational background. And when I came back to Jamaica, I I worked for the government for a while, not as a poultry nutritionist, but um, as a researcher, dealing mainly with small ruminants and cattle. And then I went to Jamaica Broilers, which is the largest poultry integrator in Jamaica. And that was an amazing 10 years. You know, I, I formulated diets for all classes, name it, horses, goats, sheep cattle, um, of course, broiler breeders, layers and broilers, which was 60% of, of my portfolio and, you know, also did inventory management, helped with the internal research projects. You know, we conducted anywhere between five to six internal research projects at our research farm. Unfortunately, you know, it's uh, proprietary information, so you can't publish right, it. Right, right. But, you know, I, I definitely kept abreast with research work. And um, throughout my lifetime, working in this multifaceted um, industry, I've just developed a passion for food security, for improving the livelihoods of, of young people, mentorship. And, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful that agriculture gave me the, the platform to achieve all of my goals. Yeah, that's that's awesome. What a neat story. I, I knew kind of the stops, your stops along the way, but I didn't know all the all the details from from A to B. So that that's a really cool story. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, going back to Jamaica after graduate school and and kind of you know learning the industry here. I mean, what are some of the throughout your career? I mean, the the challenges and, and opportunities of of operating in in Jamaica, um, you know, logistically compared with with the U.S. when we talk about ingredients and those types of things? Yeah. So one of the things that you have the privilege of in the U.S.A. is you always get ingredients either by rail cart or barges or trucks. 
in the Caribbean, it's totally different. You have to plan months ahead of time, the, the shipment sequences. And sometimes you do this, the, the, the window in which you want to import your product. And it makes for a very interesting life. Um, you know, anecdotally, when, when the Mississippi was really low last year, we had to go to Brazil and we missed several windows. So our vessel was delayed by two months. And let me tell you, <laughs> you are not a nutritionist until you've learned to formulate a diet with no soya, no other high protein source and substituting wheat for corn because wheat is slightly high in crude protein. I'm telling right, you, it right. really challenges it. <laughs> um, another, another thing that's unique to the Caribbean is our cost of production for feed is going to be much higher. We are about 30% the, the, the price of grain in the United States, which means that you have to really look at innovations um, that is going to improve your efficiency. So, for example, we, we in Jamaica, we were the first ones to widely accept the use of enzymes. So not just phytase, but xylanase, amylase, that type of thing. We readily embraced the use of organic acids way before 2008, you know, long for a lot of our industry members. I remember a, a conversation once where um, somebody was pointing out, you know, they, they found out my name and I said, oh, so you're the one that keeps on ordering valine in Jamaica. Oh, wow. And this I was using valine from 2013, you know, I was still going to workshops where people were talking about, you know, antagonism between the branch chain amino acids and so on. But I had successfully incorporated valine in my diet to reduce my cost of production. And then, you know, as soon as tryptophan became financially viable, I switched to it. As soon as the metabolites for, for uh, arginine became financially viable, I switched to it, you know. So I, I had to be on top of the game because it's about efficiency more than anything else. And um, when we went to antibiotic-free production, that certainly helped because as you know, you know, the, the higher crude protein diets really make the bird susceptible to necrotic enteritis. So understanding the physiology and and the interrelationship between ingredients and the physiology of the bird played a critical role. And interestingly, it was my work with small ruminants and cattle that really helped me understand this this interaction at the molecular level in the gastrointestinal tract. So, you know, one of the things that I, I used to always stress to my farmers when we're doing when we do farmer education is if you feed the room and you are feeding the host. And it's the same principle that I in turn implemented for the broiler chicken. If it is that you're feeding the gastrointestinal tract, you're invariably feeding the chicken itself. And it's not just because, you know, the gastrointestinal tract is the largest immune organ, but the, the interrelationship between um, the various bacteria and the, and how they affect like villi growth, um, up regulation and down regulation of gene expression at a molecular level, it's, it's very important, um, you know, and especially when you're talking about antibiotic free production and leaky gut syndrome and all of those those little things you know uh, it's more more than ever it's important to understand things from a physiological and molecular level sure yeah now that's awesome i mean so as you're adopting each of these new technology i mean what was kind of your your decision process i mean what what information were you leaning on uh you know, at times when there weren't a lot of people doing these things. So certainly published research out there, but not a lot of people you can pick up the phone and say, hey, is this working or not? I mean, what was kind of your decision process? But, you know, the fundamentals of science. Uh -huh. As I said, we have our, we had our own internal, well, Jamaica Brawler still does it, own internal research facility. It's over 48 pins. So just basic principles of positive, negative controls, um, trying to reduce the background noise as much as possible. And then just looking critically at the additives and the information that some of the suppliers would give you. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes 
there's a there's a phrase called the math ain't mathing. Well, I say the science yeah. ain't science in. You know, I have right, to right. you have to look at it critically. Sometimes suppliers would come and you know when you look on the graph uh, when they're showing a significant difference in for, for feed efficiency of for a particular additive. Well, when you look down at the bottom, you realize that it didn't start from a scale of zero. So it, it exaggerates the differences. So right, right. The, the, the fundamentals of statistical sciences, of biological sciences, remembering your biochemistry, that played an important role in evaluation of these feed additives. And, and one of the things I used to do, you know, for example, if I was evaluating an organic acid, I would try and get samples of all organic acids that were similar classes and then have my negative control and my positive control and then just compare all of them together and just do the replication. And then from the small pens that had that had 80 birds, I would move it on to the larger ex- um, demonstration farms, which had over 25,000 birds, so well, over four houses, you know, and of course there, there are health effects and you, you can't really control that adequately. You know, the only thing you can do is probably analyze it as a repeated measures. But, you know, just basic science principles, that's that's what I did when I was evaluating well, these, mm-hmm. these products. And then also, you know, you had to take into consideration things like what our environment would look like. So, a lot of these products would probably be tested in the United States or Europe. Well, in Jamaica, we have high calcium levels because our, our limestone is 99.9% pure calcium carbonate. It's highly soluble. So, but of course, you know that calcium is a great binder of many things. Right, so right. Even though they would show you these fantastic results elsewhere, you know, you had to test it in Jamaica because each country is unique and you have to know a little bit of geography to understand that and incorporate that in your experimental design and and when you're implementing uh, a new additive to your 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 feeding program yeah yeah that's really neat uh yeah i appreciate uh you know your ability to communicate using the science and the research uh, in the way that we're trained to do it even under practical you know commercial scenario Elevate bird well-being and improve profitability with Cargill's tailored nutrient solutions that deliver performance. Cargill is leading through applied nutrition, leveraging deep nutrient insights and understanding of the animal's nutrient requirements to achieve your production and performance goals. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tanika. It's been great talking with you. Um, I've learned a lot. I know the listeners are going to learn a lot from this. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, as you mentioned, you might have a little more freedom to, to move around some now. So maybe we'll uh, see you again at some meetings. And, definitely, uh, definitely. And, you know, I invite everyone to, to come visit Jamaica. You know, I, I love my country and I love showing it off to everybody. So sure, sure. Come in, enjoy the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to my first trip there for sure. So, uh, well, thanks again and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. It was truly a pleasure and I want to thank everybody for listening and I I really appreciate the work that everybody in the industry toiling hard, you know, late nights stressing out. I really appreciate the work that's being done. I'll continue to publish great work and I'll I'll continue to consume it in my quest to becoming an ever more knowledgeable nutritionist. Great, great. Well, thanks again, and and we really appreciate it. Hey, everyone, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. And if you have a poultry nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it and share it with us, feel free to email the research link, uh, the paper where we can find it, or the abstract to hello at wisenetics.com. That's hello at wisenetics.com. And look forward to hearing from you.